Hi guys and welcome back to the Mighty Blues. My name is of course Cameron. Game preview time. Leicester City versus Everton. Another absolutely humongous game of football for Everton. Yes, I am bored of using those types of terms to describe games of football. But as we all know, pretty much every single game Everton have played over the course of the last, what, two months? And every single game Everton are going to play between now and the end of the season is absolutely humongous especially in a weekend where every single result has gone our way Nottingham Forest have lost yesterday and in quite emphatic fashion uh, you know conceding a couple of goals in the last 10 minutes of the game to lose away to Brentford that will have knocked the stuffing out of their sale Southampton have lost from a winning position today at Newcastle Leeds United have lost quite heavily 4-1 I think against Bournemouth so Every single team in and around us that has played recently over the last couple of days have lost and have lost quite heavily, barring one, and that team being Leicester City, who, of course, Everton face tomorrow evening. Leicester City sitting in 18th position <clears throat> on 29 points, just a point above Everton, who sit in 19th currently, which is absolutely terrifying, absolutely terrifying i mean if we have a little look at leicester city's recent form as well and um, 33 games played for leicester um i believe it is the eight wins five draws 20 losses so they have won two more games than everton have um but of course they have only half the draws that everton have with um 20 losses to Everton 17 so they've actually lost more games than of course Everton have obviously the most recent one being um bear with me two seconds and let me just get the results up I've just clicked on Everton's by accident I apologize um being two uh, the draw with Leeds United last time out one all which again was a, a positive result for us very comfortably could have gone Leeds United's way with Patrick Bamford missing an absolute sitter in the dying embers of the game. Uh, they won at Wolves the time before that and their last defeat coming against Manchester City. Lost to Bournemouth as well. Lost to Aston Villa a couple of weeks ago. Lost to Crystal Palace. Drew with Brentford. Lost to Chelsea. Lost to Southampton. So not in a great run of form whatsoever. Um, you know, Granted, they 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 um <clears throat> they were on top for large periods in that game against Leeds, and you know had a couple of opportunities themselves to maybe run away with it in the first half, didn't take them, and in the end, it was Leeds United that were I don't want to say unlucky to not win the game, but certainly had the, the chance to win it at the uh, at the depth with Patrick Banford. Banford, but look <clears throat> again, this one tomorrow is absolutely huge. For Sean Dice, it's 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 absolutely huge, and you know, I, I I thought Everton had taken everything away from me over the course of the last couple of weeks or so, and you know that defeat to Newcastle on Thursday night was horrendous. We sat here on Thursday and done the instant match reaction and the player ratings, and I haven't felt that dejected. I haven't felt that disappointed. I haven't felt that convinced that Everton are, are, are down. In a long, long, long time, as I said, that I likened it to the game against Burnley, and in terms of the the size of the defeat and the uh, the actual sort of you know feeling that was felt after that Burnley game was similar to the one felt after the Newcastle one. Not necessarily the anger and the frustration, because as I said on Thursday, I just felt numb. But in terms of what it seemed like it meant to the table, it was similar to that Burnley game, but. Everton have almost been given a, a sort of lifeline over the last couple of days. Another lifeline, another chance. I know, you know, how many opportunities of the of these types do we need before we actually go and, and take one of them? And this weekend, we've been given a massive opportunity. Dantling and Forest could have quite comfortably won yesterday and conceded two goals in the last 10 minutes. They lost. If they'd have won, then it would have been a horrendous looking at the Premier League table today. Leeds United could have won and that would have taken them further away from us. They were beaten today. Southampton could have won and, and went a point behind us. They were beaten today. So, you know, <clears throat> there's not many more chances that we're going to have and, and there won't be many more weeks where every team around us drops points 
and gives us an opportunity, a real big opportunity to, you know, not get out of this relegation battle because, you know, even if we are to win tomorrow, that, that by no means means we are out of the relegation battle, but a win tomorrow, and, and, and it is a win, a win isn't either, the point tomorrow would be like a point at any uh, in any game at uh, this stage in the season, just not really good enough. But if we win tomorrow, it'll take us on 31 points, which will take us on 16th, just below West Ham, of course, who are on 34. That would take us above Leeds, Nottingham Forest and Leicester, who, for me, are now the teams that we are, we're fighting with. I think West Ham are safe, Wolves are safe, Bournemouth are absolutely safe after today's results. It is Leeds, Leicester, Nottingham Forest and Everton fighting for those bottom two places and you know, that's four teams fighting for two places. So if Everton can win tomorrow and go above those those uh, three other teams, then it's it's a massive, massive result. Having said that, of course, Leicester City are also in that mould and Leicester will be looking at this in very much the same sense. If they win that game, they go above, uh, <clears throat> you know, everybody else in and around them and they, you know, climb closer and closer up the table and closer to making it a, a, a race between three teams for two places as opposed to four teams for two places. So it won't be easy. It's not like we're playing a, a team in mid-table who've got nothing to play for. It's not like we're sitting here, you know, uh, looking at the side, thinking, you know, they, they've they've got nothing. We can go there and we can win. It's going to be an extremely, extremely difficult game. We have got a relatively decent record at Ellen Road in recent years and... Of course, we all remember going there last season when we massively needed to win in a relegation battle, and we went there and we got all three points, and it was a it was a fantastic evening and one that I'm sure we'll all remember. Uh, <clears throat> but this feels somewhat bigger than that game because that game come off the back of a win, and yes, we went away from home, and yes, we beat them, and yes, you know, it was massive in terms of the points on the table. But it come after a win at Goodison Park. It come on the back of some really good form and spoke to a couple of people about this game recently and a, a lot of people are confident going into it because of the fact that we beat them there last year and because of the fact that you know we can go there and we can win and I, I don't think it can sort of be likened to last year because we went there last year off the back of a load of confidence we'd had a home win where we'd had the coach greeting and everything went well and we I think it was Chelsea we beat before that and then we had obviously a coach greeting before you know, the players went to Leicester, that a load of fans, myself included, gathered outside the Finch farm to see the team off before that game. And then they went to Leicester and they ended up winning goals from Mason Hallgate and, uh, of course, Vitaly Mikhalenko won the game on that night. It is different this time around. Um, the confidence levels are nowhere near what they were at this point last season. Um, and as I said, it's really difficult, especially after Thursday, to look at any game of football and think, do you know what? I'm confident Everton can go out and win that one, especially given what we watched the other night. However, when we sat there the other night and we watched, we'd watched Nottingham Forest win on Wednesday and we'd watched Everton lose in the way that they lost, I was pretty much convinced, as I'm sure a lot of you will have known if you watched the videos, that that was it for Everton. We were gone, we were down, there's no way back. And I'm not necessarily... That necessarily hasn't changed, I don't think. Um... But I think we do need to understand that we've been given a massive, massive opportunity here. If we win tomorrow, then all of a sudden it's in our hands again. After three days ago, it looking like if we were to stay up, it would take a minor miracle. And by minor miracle, I mean everybody else around us just capitulating and not picking up any points. And us somehow picking up a point somewhere. Whereas now we're in a position where if we win tomorrow, all of a sudden we are... With the top of that pack, if if you get me, because as I said, I think teams like West Ham, Wolves, Bournemouth, I think they're out of it. So it's huge, it's humongous, and that has to be the motivation for these players, and that has to be the motivation for this manager. The players and the manager have to look at this and think, this is massive. We cannot afford to go and lose this game of football, because if we lose this game of football again, it's another opportunity gone, and all of a sudden, you know, we, 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 we're in the same position of looking at it thinking... If we are to stay up, it would be as likely as seeing a pig fly past the house because, you you know, you just can't see a way of, of that happening. Whereas if we win tomorrow, all of a sudden that changes and the feeling changes. And as I said, I'm not in any way sense, you know, of the imagination confidence and I'm not. And I won't lie to you and I'm not because ultimately, I've said before and I'll say it again, 
and I'm not going to change my mind because we've got an away game tomorrow. I don't think Everton will win another away game this season. I just don't. We haven't shown enough of Goodison to suggest that we're going to win another game this season. Never mind away from home. We've won one all season. We've won three in the last two seasons. Granted, one of them was at the King Power. But I just, you know, again, just because a couple of results have gone our way today and, you know, I've had a nice little nap before and I feel refreshed doesn't mean that all of a sudden I'm thinking, yeah, I think Everton will win tomorrow. But Everton can win tomorrow. Leicester have shown time and time again that they're a team that can be beaten. You know, even at the King Power, they're a team that can be beaten. They're a team that you can get at. They're a team you can put pressure on. And the problem is, is are Everton capable of doing that? You know, is Sean Dice capable of setting this team out with the right intention to go and do that? Have we got the quality in, in attack to be able to go and do that? Well, Dominic Calvert-Lewin is a massive help. Of course, I thought he played well against Newcastle. And again, you know, minutes in his tank and he will only get better. He will only get sharper. The players around him need to improve. Dwight McNeil needs to be better. Alex Awobi needs to be better. If it's the Marty Gray, he needs to be better. The midfield needs to be better. The core he was abysmal the other day. Onana was abysmal the other day. They all need to be better. And the manager needs to make the right decisions. I don't want to see Ben Godfrey at right back tomorrow. Preferably Seamus Coleman if he's available. If Seamus isn't available, then it's got to be Nathan Patterson. It's as simple as that. It's got to be Nathan Patterson. I don't really want to see Michael Keane tomorrow. I'd rather see Yeri Mina. And Yeri Mina could have a real positive impact on this game, both offensively and defensively. We won't see him because the manager doesn't like him for some reason. But at this point, as I said on Thursday, it's not about who the manager likes. Not interested in who the manager likes. I'm interested in who the best players are to go and get Everton the best results. And that is on the manager. The manager has to make that decision. And I think there has to be a bit of bravery tomorrow. There has to be a bit of bravery. Look, Everton shouldn't look at those results today and think, if we can go and get a point tomorrow, then that'll be a good result, because it won't be. And it's, it'd be very easy for Sean Dyche and these players to look at it and think, well, if we can come away from the King Power with a point, then that's OK, because that's a point in a weekend where Forest and Leeds and Southampton haven't picked up a point. But that's not enough. A point isn't enough for me. It isn't. You know, we're 19th in the table now. And there won't be many more weeks before the end of the season where every team around us, Forest, Leeds, Southampton, all drop points. And we have the opportunity to make Leicester drop points, you know, lose a game as well and, and it be everybody around us. So there needs to be a bit of bravery. It's sort of do or die now. A point isn't good enough. And if we go out and we win this game, then literally everybody around us has lost in a weekend where Everton have won. And all of a sudden, a hopeless team, you know, who we all th th thought was dead and buried and certainly all felt like was dead and buried on Thursday, all of a sudden, in the space of three days, becomes in the best position out of the teams that are, are, are around us. And it can all be done with one win. And that's where that bravery needs to come. That's where that bit of grit needs to come. That's where that bit of, right, we're going to take this opportunity because we've been given it and we need to take it. And taking it isn't going and getting a point tomorrow because that's not good enough. Because we will not stay up. If we don't win another game this season, we won't stay up. Regardless of whether we get points. We won't stay up if we don't win another game this season. And there's not many better, better opportunities we've got. Bright, bright in a way, who have just absolutely bladdered um, whoever they were playing yesterday was it Wolves can't remember 6-0 something like that we've got Wolves away who okay hot and cold but again difficult game we've got City at home which will be one that again you never know but very unlikely and then we've got Bournemouth we haven't got many other opportunities to win games of football we've got to be brave tomorrow team news for me as I said, I'd, I'd go Pickford in goal, Michalenko left back, not many other options. I'd go Tarkowski and um, Mina with Coleman at right back. What I think Dice will do is probably put Keane in there with Tarkowski. What I think he should do, if he's not going to play Mina for whatever reason, I'd put Connor Cody back in there. Because I know Connor Cody hasn't been great and I know Connor Cody was taken out of the team because of bad form, but he's better than Michael Keane. He's a much better defender than Michael Keane. We'll see what happens. Michael Keane might be the hill that Sean Dyche dies on as the Everton manager, theoretically. You know the saying. 
Um, but we'll see. I'd have Coleman back in there if he's fit. If he's not fit, it's got to be Nathan Patterson. Kill the days of playing, um, you know, centre-backs at right-back. Because it doesn't work. Especially not very good centre-backs at right-back. Midfield. I think he will go with the same three. Onana, Garner and Decore. But I would demand more from him. I'd demand more from Onana. Walking around the pitch and clapping the fans isn't isn't enough. You need to be involved in the game. You need to change the game. Decore as well, similar. I'd demand more from Garner. I think he's done okay. And then forward line, I would have Dwight McNeil and Dominic Calvert-Lewin. And I'd probably bring Damari Gray back in for the... No. No, I'd probably put a Wobie in there because I think generally he creates more than Damari Gray. Dwight McNeil, I think, whilst he hasn't been great, he's worked hard and you can't deny, you know, his, his impact since Dice has come in. And Dom has to start and, you know, Dom's had a couple of games now to get back to match fitness to get his, you know, a little bit back in his legs. Now it's time to go out and score the goals. If ever there's a time we need Dominic Calvert-Lewin to burst onto the seat, you know, into the game and score a couple of goals, it's it's tomorrow evening. So we'll wait and see what the manager does. But as I said, this is a massive, massive opportunity now and one that, for me, Everton have to be a bit brave and take and hopefully go out and get the three points in. But there you go. If you have enjoyed it, please leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Instant match reaction and play ratings will be up after the game. So look out for those and yeah. They're giving me optimism and that means they're giving me hope and that means that tomorrow night I could quite well be destroyed and brought back down to earth again. But that's what football's about, isn't it? Big thanks for watching. Leave a like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. Up the fucking toffees and we'll see you later.